This continues my fixed income subseries where my sequence is based on what's assigned to FRM candidates. So that means I'm in chapter three of Bruce Tuckman and his illustration of spreads, a really common and fundamental idea in fixed income. And I'll show you that this is just a two step idea where the first step here is the assumption of a risk free curve or risk free term structure. In this case, it's the treasury curve. Treasury curve we construct by observing treasury bonds. Those imply a discount function. So we have a risk-free term structure. And then we observe securities in the market. In this case, we'll observe a security that happens to be trading cheap. And what we'll mean by that is that its term structure is happens to be 4.4 basis points above the risk-free or treasury curve. So that's a spread, 4.4 basis points is constant. And so we'll say that the bond trades cheap by 4.4 basis points. The first of the two steps here is just the assumption set. In this case, the assumption is, what is the risk-free term structure? or as Tuckman uses the treasury term structure as a proxy for the risk-free term structure. And so I've already covered in previous videos how we would construct this. I won't go into the details here, except just to summarize and say that what we do is we observe a set of treasury bonds that are trading with actual prices. From those prices, we infer the discount function, that's the set of discount factors. And the law of one price tells us that at each maturity, there is only one discount factor. That is the multiplier we apply to a future cash flow to get the present value. And arbitrage should enforce more or less the law of one price so that we only have a single discount function here. Again, for the risk-free term structure, and then from, the, from those discount factors, they are directly linked to spot rates, which we also call zero rates in this context. And the forward rates can be inferred from the spot rates. Also, directly from the discount fa factor, it just happens to be a simple formula. If I want here the one-year uh, forward rate, I really just need to go up here and get the six-month discount factor, divide that by the one-year discount factor, subtract one and multiply that quantity by two. And you'll see that gives me the forward rate as well. I've covered that in a previous video, so I won't do it here. So that's really just the assumption. And you can see I've highlighted in blue the forward rates because as we move sort of into advanced, uh, intermediate advanced bond fixed income, it becomes for various reasons uh, better to use the forward rate curve. It's a little smoother, especially when you go into the multi-factor models. But in any case, that was the first step. We have an assumption about the forward rate curve. You can see again here in blue, and I've emphasized that it's risk-free rate. And then we have a bond. Now I'm in the second step. Uh, this bond pays a 3 eighths coupon or 0.375%. Uh, and then that means we have the future cash flow stream here. It's a 18 month or one and a half year bond such that we can get the present value of this bond by using the uh, forward rates here, discounting really at the forward rates, such that if we assume the law of one price, the present value or theoretical price of this bond should be $100.25.5. And this matches the example in at the beginning of Tuckman's chapter three. Okay, so that's a theoretical price as opposed to, in this example, the price that we observe in the market, right? So we distinguish between a theoretical or model price that would be implied by our model here, which is a discounted cash flow, and as opposed to the market model versus market price, here is the observed market price. And we can see that, well, if I just take the difference, 
it is uh, lower, and so we would say the bond is trading cheap. Tuckman's number is about six and a half cents. Um, I'm using exact numbers from going back to his original uh, term structure, so I get I get six point six cents, pretty close. But you can see it's lower, so we say trading cheap, right? And we do expect some variation. The bond can be trading cheap or trading rich, and what trading cheap means here is that the observed price is lower than the theoretical price if we were to use the discount factors. So rather than leave it at that, enter the role of the spread. Spread's a measure of relative value. And you can see I have here as an input in yellow, because this is there is not really an analytical solution to this, it's an iterative solution. What we're doing is we're solving for the spread and the spread gets added to the forward rate here as a constant, right? So we have one spread, and you can see I have a line here for the forward rate plus the spread. Now, I'll just change my uh, spread to 0.06% for example, and so you can see if I have the 0.06% add it to the forward rate, and then I compute the present value as before, by discounting at the forward rates, and then I compute a present value. But in this case, I'm not matching the theoretical price. Rather, the key idea here is that we're dealing with reality here. We are observing a price of this bond in the marketplace, and the price is, let me just confirm, $100.19. So, it's really the input, right? We expect per the discount function law of one price, we would expect this price. But what we see is a bond that's trading cheap with this price. And now we don't change our assumption about the term structure. Rather, we go and solve for the spread that when we discount these cash flows gives us a model price that matches the observed market price. Right, so we observe $100.19. I've got a spread in there of 0.06%. It's not quite right. And I would just have to iterate, right? I put in 0.03%. That's not quite right. And I know because I had this in when we started that it's 4.4 uh, basis points is the correct spread. That's in Tuckman's chapter. So if I put that spread and you can see it's iterative, then I get I add that to the forward rate, right? So my forward rate, that's my forward rate term structure of risk-free. Now I'm adding a spread, presumably for credit risk, to get the this term structure here. And now I'm discounting the same future cash flows, but now at higher rates. And I'm getting $100.19 matches the market price. And so that's telling me this is the spread, the measure of relative value. So now that instead of saying, or as an alternative is saying, this bond trades cheap by six and a half cents, which is true on a price, the price, it trades cheap on price by six and a half cents. As an alternative to that, I can say, and probably more common, I would say this bond trades cheap by 4.4 basis points by which I mean that this three-quarter bond trades at 4.4 basis points above the treasury curve. So that's really it to it. The only thing about this here, present value, hopefully you know, um, that when I discounted the cash flow there, I, I need to chain all the forward rates if I'm going to do that, right? So just to uh, explicate that, I'll take that future cash flow if, we, if I just want to explicate that here. Future cash flow here, I'm going to divide by 1 plus this forward rate, multiplied by 1 plus this forward rate, multiplied by 1 plus this forward rate. And of course, I forgot to divide by 2 because these are, we are semi annual discounting. Okay, there we go. So that spreads. If that's helpful, uh, videos help. If the video is helpful, please subscribe to the channel, and you'll get our notifications. Thank you.